Hey guys, welcome to Etsy shop reviews. This is episode number 79. We're taking a look at another viewer submitted Etsy shop to see what they are doing well, what they can improve upon. Hopefully everybody benefits along the way. Let's get to it. All right, the shop is Sleeping Angel Treasures, a star seller with 37 sales, average review of five stars. That is awesome. Uh, featured items, okay, all items. <clears throat> Let's just take a look at the all items and kind of scroll down. So number one, the first thing I'll say is I really think uh, this specific thumbnail over my shoulder right here, uh, I like this more than I like the whole like first row of featured items products. I just really think that this one over my shoulder here, I'll just open a new tab, fits the Etsy vibe way more than uh you know the ones over my, you know the ones up here in the featured items that look more to me like what you see on Amazon merch also I'm noticing a pretty consistent rendering of your designs like in the middle of the shirt like vertically instead of at the top you know and uh I mean you did it good on this shirt I will say like this shirt just seems like you you did everything just about right which is awesome but, um, you know, looking at a lot of these up here in the top row, especially this one, like the design on the shirt should render near the top. It's okay if it doesn't fill the whole print area vertically. Uh, if it only filled half of it vertically or even less than that, it's just fine, right? But the design shouldn't float, you know, in the middle of the shirt, you know, same here. It's like it's it's rendered really far down the shirt. It's like awkwardly far down. Like it may be equidistant from the top and the bottom of the print area when you're in, you know, Printful or Printify. But the reality is like nobody thinks, nobody really, nobody, nobody sees it that way. Just like us, you know, small fraction of 1% of people who are selling print on demand would get that. You know what I mean? So we, we might know why the designs in this case are rendered so far down the shirt. But to everybody else, it's just going to look weird, you know, and you might have returns on your hand. You definitely, you definitely don't want that. Um, another thing is I, I'm a the white background stuff, like it's it works for Amazon because it's required. On Etsy, <laughs> there's no rule about white backgrounds on primary thumbnails, so I really advise against using white backgrounds on primary thumbnails. So this one right here, uh, this one right here, they both have white backgrounds. I don't think that's a good idea on Etsy. This one right here, um, not that you can't do it, but it, it looks like fake Amazon when you do that. You know what I mean? It's not the Etsy vibe. You know, part of part of what makes Etsy Etsy is that you don't have to do the white backgrounds and you can add a little flavor, a little personalization to the um, primary thumbnails. And another thing that I'm just seeing at a glance as I scroll, and you know, I mean, in these videos, I usually harp a lot on the primary thumbnails because that's really it, you know? Um, <laughs> those primary thumbnails have to sell whatever it is you're selling, you know? It's, it's not just the design, but that being said, like, what are they really buying? Because there's a million t-shirt sellers on Etsy, you need to sell the <laughs> the enthusiasm of wearing that design on that product. So in this case, it's a design on a t-shirt. I do think that a lot of your, like if I'm just like zoomed out in my mind and I'm scrolling through your page, I'm like, all right, cool. This is a t-shirt shop. A lot of different unique thumbnails. A lot of navy blue shirts, even though black probably sells more. But also keep in mind, like on Etsy, the lighter colors probably sell more than the darker colors. I don't think we know that for sure with any data, but I know a lot of people agree with me that that's probably the case. I had to kind of come around to that myself. I was a creature of habit and would list a lot of dark colored shirts. And I, I personally do think like just based on sales history that I've experienced myself that the lighter colored shirts probably sell better. Um, beyond that though, you're not doing a great job in my mind of really highlighting the design because the design is really what people need to get excited about. In a lot of your thumbnails, it's like a shirt, but then it's like a, a coat over top of the shirt and something in the background and all these different things competing for your attention. When in reality, like someone who is gonna buy from you, number one, they probably have options, meaning there's probably competitors who are selling something very similar to what you're selling. And like if they're going to click your product and buy your product and not your competitors, you definitely want them to know immediately at a glance, even out of a peripheral that you are selling this design on this shirt, right? And it looks really good, right? Value propositions there. 
whether it's the price point, but probably not the price point. It should probably just be something in the thumbnail, right? That makes them excited about wearing it. So it's a long-winded way of saying, like, I think you need to make your designs bigger in your primary thumbnail, which you can do a couple of ways. Like, you can change up the thumbnails, or you can use the existing ones that you've got and zoom in. When you zoom in, and then when I say zoom in, like, you can use Etsy's crop feature. They, they literally have a crop feature built into Etsy, so you can pick what portion of the design to really hone in on, and then you can zoom in, zoom out. I would zoom in more. Focus on the design. But be careful where you like use a lot of these mock-ups where you're wearing jackets and stuff because number one, they might overlay over the design. Not that I think you did a good job of picking ones that don't do that, but like it also then leaves like, what if it's a long sleeve shirt? What is it a short sleeve shirt? Is it a tank top? Like it leaves questions unanswered. And the reality is like, they just need to know, like, like, like if your designs are good and you're in good niches and you have competitive price points, what people really need to know is like that you're selling this design on this shirt and I can buy it right away right now. Click you, add to cart, done. You know what I mean? Like all the extra stuff, I almost think it's like, it's not bad. Like your, your thumbnails look great, but it's not really helping either, right? It's not helping optimize for the sale. It's like, it looks like you also didn't want to use the same thumbnail twice. You have got a really wide variety of thumbnails. And I mean, it is worth reminding that most people never see your shop. Definitely the vast majority never do what I'm doing now where they click and scroll through your shop. So using the same thumbnail twice really doesn't work against you. Like what I would highly recommend doing is finding a thumbnail that performs really well and you can vary the thumbnail by niche, but typically it's like, okay, if I'm doing Easter, I'll do like one primary thumbnail that works really well for Easter. Okay. Next is, um, father's day, whatever I'm going to, or mother's day is actually next. I'm going to do another thumbnail probably that I'll reuse a bunch of times for mother's day. Cause it's performing really well, whether it's like a color scheme, uh, the, the thumbnail itself, maybe there's a model in the thumbnail. Like if it's mother's day, okay, cool. Put a mother in there. Right. If it's a unisex holiday, then maybe just do a flat mock-up, but all these things like they add up. And I think you can make your life a lot easier and save yourself a ton of time by making a templated approach to creating really nice Etsy thumbnails and not having to spend so much time probably in what place it, if I had to guess, um, love place it. I'm just saying like, you don't have to spend so much time constantly looking for new thumbnails. Also, it's just, I don't know. <laughs> it's a little bit weird that like you use so much Navy, you know what I mean? Like if you're going to optimize for dark colored shirts, you typically are okay. Just using black. I mean, it is Etsy, so I get it. But like, if you're not just going to use black, like it looks like you've almost like defaulted to using Navy as like the go-to. I personally wouldn't do that. If I had to like do something other than black, it'd probably be something like this, the, uh, the Heather dark gray, you know what I mean? So I just think that, you know, you're, you've, you've clearly put in the work. You've clearly, clearly put in the work, which I definitely commend. That's awesome. Most people don't put in the work you've put in the work, but you need to continue to improve. Like it is a journey, right? We go to college for four years just to then <clears throat> get hired as a beginner at whatever, you know, profession it is, I would go back to the drawing board and develop a templated way of creating your listing images. Cause those images, if they're not right, then that's top priority. You don't need to worry about like, I mean, SEO matters, right? But like, we don't need right now to look at your SEO because your images aren't good enough in my mind, right? Like if we put you on one screen and, and a top performing print on demand shop on the other side and just side by sided, there will be massive discernible differences. So I would just say study some of the people doing it better than you that are where you want to be. Implement a lot of what they're doing. Doesn't mean clone their approach, but just like study it, take note, and uh, don't be afraid to vary things from niche to niche, but definitely don't feel the need to vary things from listing to listing. You know, you've got 343 listings, man. Like that's, whew, that's a lot of different, a lot of work, you know? But I, again, I commend that you did put in the work. It makes me confident you're going to, be very successful in the long term, but yeah, I think you can level up by starting with a templated approach for your images. When I say templated, that means, oh, I'm going to have a, like, oh, this is my Bella Canvas 3001 listing template. I've got this as the primary. I've got this as the secondary color chart, size chart, care card. You know what I'm saying? Like you can make everything very easy and it removes the variability from listing to listing, saves a ton of time. And assuming that they're well optimized, like it's going to most likely increase your conversion rate all while doing less work. 
So that's what I think you should do. Guys, I hope you found this useful. Check out my full print on demand course, which will help you do everything I mentioned in this video, help you implement them, take as many shortcuts as possible, and then later on automate it, right? If you wanna learn from me, how I make six figure print on demand profits every year since 2019, it is linked in the description, my Ryan's method print on demand course. Guys, thank you for watching. Drop a like for the algorithm, subscribe if you're not already, and I'll see you tomorrow with a new top five niches of the week video. Thank you